Okay, when you open Scratch, this is what you're going to see. This is the interface. Um, there is an online version that looks just the same, but you're using the version that's installed on your machine. That allows you to save your files and open your files from your own computer rather than saving them online. And when you get round to doing that, you'll simply come up to this file button here and you'll click Save As. I'm saving mine into my D drive and I've got a folder called Scratch Programs and they end up just looking like this. They've got SB2 files is what they're called and you can open them and save them very easily. I'm not going to do that for the minute. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the actual environment that you're looking at. So you've seen on the PowerPoint there's various parts that make up your interface but just to remind you this area here this white background is called the stage and this is where we place our characters um, there's one of my characters these are called sprites and you can see underneath here in the sprites panel this is the sprite for that particular thing now I can move this anywhere around on my stage area and if I wanted to make it move from left to right and so on I can use the code to do that in a moment what I want you to see is these XY coordinates down here. So when I move my mouse around, or if I choose to move the scratch cat around, you can see that there's different coordinates for it. That basically, in the very center is 0, 0. So you've got X and Y going from plus to minus. So you can position things later on using coordinates if you wanted to. OK, um, we've got a background. Now this is called the, the backdrop. There's nothing on there at the moment, but I could actually choose to put my back, uh, background on there. I'm going to put one on there just to show you, although I'm probably going to take mine off again in a minute. There's different ways of doing it. I can choose one from the library. I can basically paint one myself. I can upload one, so I might have got a picture off the internet or something like that. Or I can use a camera to do it now. Using the camera on your laptop is not quite so straightforward, but it's possible to do it that way. I'm just going to get them from the library. So I click on the library. I get lots of different options. Um, say I wanted to go for an underwater one like this. I could choose this one, double-click it. And you can see now that my background area is taken up with that. At the same time, this middle section is swapped from scripts to backdrops. Now this, if I wanted to, allows me to actually use paint tools and alter this picture myself. So I could do changes to it. You can see there's lots of buttons and things I can do with that. I'm not going to do that at the moment. In fact, I'm actually not going to even use this background. I just wanted to show you how you did that. The original background is the white one. This is the second one. I'm just going to delete the second one. I'm going to go back to the default. So when you first open yours, you'll see the cat in the middle. You'll see this white backdrop. And that's where we're going to start from. I'm going to click back where we were up here to scripts. Now, what we've got here are different types of blocks of code. You can see that they're color coded. But basically, um, a lot of the ones that you're going to use in the first case will be motion clips. And the motion clips work when I've got my blue that my sprite down here selected so I can make this thing this cat move if I chose to and literally all I do is I drag out code over to here whatever those different codes are and I can combine them together now they don't combine until you push them up close and then they turn white you see that goes white when that goes white and I let go it joins the two together if I want to actually move them around I pick this top one if I want to break them apart, I grab the bottom one and drag down. When I don't want them any longer, I can literally just chuck them back over here and they disappear again. So this grey area over here is the scripting area. This is where I actually drag my code blocks to create my sequence of code. I can have more than one on there. And these codes are kind of attached to whichever sprite I've got selected. So I could have more than one sprite here. I don't necessarily have to use just the cat. I could have lots. But at the moment, we're going to keep it straightforward. We're just going to use one sprite and look at a little bit of code. Now, um, before we do that, I'm just going to mention these other two things now. So now that I'm not using the backdrop, I don't have the backdrop icon anymore. I've got one called costumes. Now, costumes, a bit like skins. I could have, for my cat up here, different costumes. And you can see that costume one and costume two look slightly differently. His feet are in a different position. So that the reason for that is if you wanted to give the impression of the thing running, uh, you, we can use the code to switch the costumes that the sprite's wearing. We can bring in other costumes for our sprites. We can create our own drawing. You can see up here, we've got a costume library where we can get all sorts of different things. We're not going to do that for now, but there's lots of categories of different things that you can use. 
um, and you can the same way you can paint your own you can bring your own in and so on like we did with the original sprite the last one here is sounds so in a, again we've got a library of sounds and we can upload them we can create our own and so on the one at the moment is a meow sound but we can attach sounds to our sprites as well so under certain conditions they play again you'll see more of this in the in the future but i just wanted to make you aware of what you're looking at okay there's a few other things that are worth mentioning over here on the far right there's a picture of a, of a question mark if you click on that it opens the onboard help now the onboard helps really good you can click on all tips and get some ideas on how you go through doing different things there's the how to's and, and you can choose the different areas and so on and there's ha how to's that respond to each block so like you've got motion over here and you've got move and turn and so on if you open up the plus on here it'll tell you how those different things work a more specific way of doing it is to come up here click the block help up here and when that turns into a little question mark you can click on anything so if I wanted to know what um, change Y means I can click on that and a little message box will, will come up and explain what that little block does so it's really useful easy quick way of learning how to do things okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to make a, a tiny little bit of code to show you how it works okay I'm going to start with motion and I'm going to get my my little cat figure to do something and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose move now when you want to test something I'm going to move this over here to start with if I want to see what this code does I double click it and you can see that that's moving him each time I click it it's moving him a small amount it's moving him 10 steps okay so it's not centimeters or pixels or anything like that it's got its own little scale on there but we're going to call that one steps so we might want to increase that so I'm going to double click in here and I'm going to make that a hundred instead so it moves in a hundred steps so now each time I click he moves much further I can position him anywhere in the screen and I can test it and you'll also notice up here this green flag flicks on every time it runs a bit of code telling me what's going on the other one's obviously a stop signal so I've got my little um, character up there and he's going to move a hundred steps what I want him to be able to do though is I want to be able to do that more than once and I want it to do it on its own so I'm going to bring in now something I'm going to tell him to turn and I'm going to get him to turn instead of 15 degrees I'm going to get him to turn 90 degrees okay so he should move forward and turn 90 degrees so let's test that out okay every time I do it he turns around okay but I wanted to do that all in one go so now I'm gonna basically bring in what's called a repeat loop so I'm gonna go into control I'm gonna find the one called repeat I don't want to repeat it um, forever I want to repeat it a number of times So I'm gonna grab this one and you'll see when I pull it close it's asking me is that how I want it to do it and I do I'm gonna repeat it four times so he's gonna basically look like he's doing a square okay um, but what I want to do if I actually run this now it does it so fast you can't really see what's going on so I'm going to add something in called a wait command now my wait command is down here somewhere so I'm going to go for wait and I'm going to choose seconds you can see there's different ways of doing it and I don't want it to be one second because that's too slow I'm going to try 0.4 of a second okay watch what happens now okay I've only clicked it I've double clicked it that once and it does those four commands and you can see when it's doing it this thing has a kind of halo effect around it goes kind of white around the edges watch again okay so that's my first little bit of code and you can notice that at any point I can change this code if I don't like things I can go in and I can change the degrees I could change the seconds I could change the number of steps or if I don't want them at all I can pull these things out and get rid of them swap them out and so on so it's a bit like using Lego you can build your own stuff with them okay um, on here you'll see you've got a minus and equals and a, and a plus you've also got the ability to right click if I right click I get something called cleanup and it basically tries to make my code more tidy for me you might not want to do that the other thing is you can increase the size of it if you want to be able to see more clearly on a small screen what you're doing you can do that 
equals just resets it and minus makes it go smaller. So this is how we're going to use our environment. Um, now, the last thing, I'm going to move that back down, do something different on mine. I'm going to um, make it draw the line that it's walking, walking along. So I'm going to now use something called pen. And I'm going to say I'm going to put my pen down and I'm going to put that right at the top. So the first thing it does is it's going to drop a pen. Now I don't know what color that pen's going to be yet. I think it's going to default to this blue here because that's what it's set for. We could change colors if we want to, but for the moment we'll just leave it like this and see what it does. Okay, you can see that it's drawn that square for me. I'll move this out of the way, put him over here, do it again. And it's drawn another one for me. Super duper. The only other thing I might want to do on here is have a separate bit of code that clears it. So if I double click clear, it gets rid of it. If I position my cat, it draws it. Um, the one thing you could do on yours if you wanted to do it a little bit differently, before you start, you could choose your own sprite. So if I clicked in the sprite head here and I'll have a look at animals and let's see I'll choose one I don't want to use the cat uh, maybe I'll use this fish so I'm going to choose a fish say OK it's brought my fish in now I've already got mine set up but what I could do if I wanted to be smart is I could grab my code from here and I could drag it down onto this one and duplicate it you can see it's coming here now and I could even the I don't need to bother with a clear one. I, I could do the same thing, but it's quicker just to drag that out from here. And now if I wanted to, I could delete this original one. So I'm just left with my fish. I'll clear what's going on there and I'll see if my fish can draw for me. Okay, so I want you to have a go at doing the same thing. Choose a sprite and get it to create this code to draw a square for yourself. Good luck.